So, Sabenza. This was uh, very generously loaned to me by my friend David. Thank you very much. I was particularly impressed when I uh, tried to trade for this and you told me you couldn't because it was a gift from your wife. So thank you very much for trusting me with it first off. I was very interested uh, to get my hands on one of these and check it out firsthand because, you know, if you're in the knife community, you've heard the name, you've heard the hype, you've heard people go on and on about it with opinions this way and that about this knife in particular and, you know, high-end knives, stuff, stuff that costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And it's, I don't really want to get uh, too deep into the weeds there. I'll just say from my perspective, I had doubts that a knife like this um, really made sense. Uh, what I mean by that is, well, basically two things. This isn't going to be too long. I just want to tell you where I'm coming from. One is sort of basic utility. I mean, let's be real here. You could buy a knife like this. Similar size, similar shape for $25 or something. And it'll cut pretty much anything a Sebenzo will cut. So there's that. You know, what's the extra 400 getting you exactly? Now, I'm sure there'll people who say, oh, the Sebenza is better in this or that way, and I'm not saying it isn't, but it's just food for thought. You can get a good knife for like 20 bucks. So, a knife that's 400 bucks had better be darn good. And that was sort of my problem, because I've been buying progressively more and more expensive knives for a few years at this point, and had gotten sort of burnt out on it because I wasn't seeing the returns exactly. Uh, this, by the way, is, is my most expensive folder that I ever bought. You know, because like I said, you can get a pretty good knife for 20 bucks. You can get a really nice knife for 100 bucks. And for 150, well, you get a really nice knife. And for 200, you get a really nice knife. At a certain point, it seems like you're not really getting more, but you're paying more. So, that's a lead up to saying that once I had a Sebenza in my hands and was looking at it with my own eyes, not in a picture, not in a video, I get it. I, uh, you know, within a couple days, I was, <laughs> I was looking up prices of Chris Reeve knives and I was talking to David to see if he'd trade this to me because I kind of fell in love with it. Now, a few days on from that, I had second thoughts and, you know, returned to saying, you know, that is a heck of a lot of money for where your finances are right now. You know, take it easy, guy. But I do get it. I do understand why you would want to own one of these. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of functional art. You know, from a practical standpoint, is it a better, is it, is it, is it a better tool? than this, that, or the other thing, I'm not sure. I don't know. Because for one thing, like I said, it's somebody else's knife in like an anniversary present. I have been doing cutting with this, okay? So forgive me if it's not some sort of torture test review. But here's the thing, like I said, functional art. Uh, Mr. Reeve, in designing this thing, has clearly put a lot of thought into it. And on features where other people would be inclined to cut corners, it's almost like he goes around an extra corner if he thinks it'll give a good result. There are so many little touches in this thing, I, I don't know if I can really even show them to you without making a ridiculously long video. I know it looks like I'm already up over four minutes. Let me just try to highlight a couple things that would maybe be sort of an example. Let me zoom in a little bit here. See this lug here? This is one of the main things that holds the knife together. It has very few screws, by the way. I think it's seven total. And it's got that big pin right there. That's the stop pin. And also, as I said, an important thing for holding the knife together. And all along the side of the handle here, there's this chamfering. Rounded off, rounded off corner. As it passes the lug, the chamfering stops. Look 
that, it's beefier right around the lug. I have never seen anything like that. That has to be extra machining operations, extra care. And it's just kind of mind-blowing to me. Because the knife is filled with crazy little details like that as you examine it. Also around here, the back of the blade is rounded out so that it hugs this big oversized stop pin with a rather extreme looking amount of precision. It's absolutely gorgeous from an engineering standpoint. And the thing is, it's gorgeous from an aesthetic standpoint too. Because I don't know if this, this generally for me, part of the reason I didn't get it is because this knife is pretty in a way that doesn't really come across on camera. I mean, for example, the handle looks really plain in most of the pictures I've seen. It's not really that plain. Something about this finish is really gorgeous. It has like a very, very subtle, sparkly kind of warmth to it. This is the best looking titanium I have ever seen. And basically every surface on this knife looks perfect. And I guess that's what the money is getting you. Does it make it a better tool? Maybe, but that's not really the point. If you want something with an extreme amount of understated elegance, something you can be, be proud of, I could understand getting one of these, without a doubt. Will I ever get one? I don't know. But I understand why people want knives like this. It is definitely, definitely a desirable object. So, I think that's about all I have to say about it. There's lots of Sabenza videos on YouTube that can give more details and things, but... You know what? My channel is a lot of stuff about budget knives. And people who are into budget knives, including myself, often don't get why people buy the stuff that's hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I thought maybe I could offer some perspective on that. Um, you know, maybe, maybe explain it a little bit, because I, I didn't get it either. And I do now. It's gorgeous. It really is. Alright guys, this is Jobin, signing off. Saying remember where your knife is. Especially if it's a Sabenza. <laughs> Hey, one function thing I want to address uh, that I think is pretty neat. Uh, the Sabenza is quite smooth. Uh, maybe not the smoothest knife I've ever used, but very pleasant. And interestingly, there's a bit of uh, force required to open it. Not extreme, but a moderate amount of force that has to be applied all the way through the opening cycle as you're swinging the blade through its arc. It's not one of those knives that just slams open as soon as you touch the thumb stud. And I believe actually Mr. Reeve uh, says that Flicking it is abuse, which I'm not sure I entirely think is reasonable, but whatever. That's not my point. My point is that opening this knife feels very interesting. It's rather like uh, those cars that have pneumatic cylinders in the hood or in the trunk, where instead of just slamming shot on a hinge that swings freely, you have to apply some pressure all the way down through the thing. So opening it, opening the Sabenza is like that. It's like, shh, click. Very nice.